it looks like our guy BGL got gadooshed. BGL got officially gadoosh according to these screenshots taken from the Fire and the Kids subreddit where people are basically um, sharing this amazing, amazing news that BGL got gadoosh. Let me put it up here on the screen so you guys can see. Can you see that? Somebody asked him, you got fired from Fire and the Kid? Question mark. Brenda made a joke about firing more people. Then I realized you've not been on for weeks. He replied, yeah he fired me but another person quit guess he's trying to reframe that <laughs> what an absolute idiot who do you think quit by the way who's another person that quit i can't think of one there's that kid who's used to be fat who's now skinny who was doing a fight but i saw him recently in a clip right he was hanging around with chin so i don't think he got fired maybe it was um the other guy that Brenda keep mentioning, who's like the head of operations or the producer, the creative director of, um, oh, producer Nick. Really? It's producer Nick, says Zach. Producer Nick got fired from Thick Boy. That is crazy. If I'm not mistaken, was producer Nick not um, one of Fear Vaughn's guys? Or was he always, no, I'm I'm not. I, I'm lying. Producer Nick was always Brenda Short's producer, but for um, King of the Sting, right? Because Chin only does the fight the, sorry chin only does the fight and the kid stuff he doesn't do anything else does he i'm pretty sure he that's what he does but i for some reason thought that producer nick was fear Vaughn's producer for some reason i don't think he is though um i think it's somebody else it may be that really silent assassin serial killer asian guy that doesn't really talk too much who goes to church all the time and maybe it's that he's that guy but rah producer nick and bjl got the douche now i'm thinking my thinking my theory on this is I don't think they were fired for their performance. I have a feeling they were fired to lower cost because I was out playing other clips later on in the show. There's a clip where Brenda mentions they're going to change the scheduling for the show because it's getting shadow banned and they're not getting the right amount of views. And if you look over some of their past episodes, you can clearly see that the views have been tanking somewhat, no pun intended, um, since they've decided to do what they're doing now. So let's just double check anyway, because I think it's and not necessarily get into where they're going to. And I only realized that the other day when someone posted about it on the Final Kids subreddit, because before that I didn't really buy into this whole narrative that the views are affecting stuff and things are going a bit awry. But I think overall, the views are now at a point where they're underneath 100K. And if you don't think about AdSense and whatnot, you know, especially nowadays, views of 100k per video, you're not getting that much money, especially when you account for the amount of people that they hire. It's not that much. So let's go on the Fire and the Kid subreddit. Sorry, the Fire and the Kid um, page on YouTube here. Um, we're going to find the Kid subreddit in a minute, but let's go on the page itself. And I think if you check it, you'll see that most of the videos are definitely under 100,000. Like, yeah, just the other one the other day is only at 59,000. And I say only, my videos don't get many views, don't get me wrong, I'm not judging them in any kind of way, but judging on their own past performance, on their previous videos and where they came from, this is a big fall off, like a hell of a fall off. So if we look at the channel now, as we've got it on screen, um, in the last few weeks, only one episode has gone over 100,000. That was the one they did with Bradley Martin, which I think was definitely a thing they did last minute as a ploy to give them a bit of a bump in terms of the views, especially with January being so um, uh, being so flipping dry. So I think that happens. What, what some say, Martin Moose saying to me, you don't got to run an empire off of AdSense. Oh yeah, no, of course, of course, of course. But um, I think I, you, we're saying the same thing, uh, Martin Moose. I think the issue they have is that I'm sure they don't make their much the I'm sure they don't make the bulk of their money from AdSense. Um, it's impossible. They make it more from sponsors. And if we know anything, having listened to that guy Scott Schaefer talk about um talk about that company that was giving people plots of lands in Scotland that was fake, uh, and whatever it was called, I think he mentioned in one of the videos that they were giving out like ten to thirty grand per ad to some people per month so you'd be getting a 10 grand drop of reading out a flipping ad read at the beginning of your video or saying it's sponsored by this particular company so if that's the kind of range they're in let's take a low estimate let's say five thousand per ad those are still though those will make up a lot for all the stuff you don't get from adsense especially if you get demonetized it gets restricted that is a lot of money so i think what the views do is that they prove to the sponsors that you've got a viewership 
and then those views allow you to get a higher rate in your sponsors and your ads and if you listen to somebody like a joe rogan yes uche for sure i'm on it i'm on that for sure this is something like a joe rogan podcast you see you will see ads dotted around the entire thing and i would imagine joe rogan per episode must get crazy amounts of money through the ads that are coming in so you know the views matter basically so the views don't matter in adsense i think martin moves is saying that way it's right but they matter in terms of getting or negotiating better rates in terms of ads or sponsors, sorry, going on to your pod. But yeah, checking on their recent pods, except for Bradley Martin, everything's been under 100K, isn't it? Everything's been under 100K, everything. Um, looking through them again, there's a 99 here. There's a 79 with a UFC fighter, Frankie Edgar, former legend. Even the Chet Hanks one that they tried to jump on the algorithm and get a bit viral, that didn't work. Harlan Williams, wow. Harlan Williams is able to pull in 100K. Big up Harlan Williams. That's awesome to see. Um, the reaction to Liver King got 134. The Christian comedian guy got 73. Oh, look at that. The Rick Glassman one got really high rate. 161. Big up Rick Glassman with the flipping banging. So clearly, there's an issue going on there. So my theory, my theory, personally, for me only, I feel like um, BGL and producer nick probably got good douche not because of their performance but because they just can't afford to keep them on and it depends because you know i think there's another screenshot going around um where bgl suggests that he wasn't getting paid and he makes it seem like you know he wasn't in it for the money which is a bit i don't know if i buy that i don't i don't understand why a grown man at his age with his addictions <laughs> would be working for free it doesn't really make any sense to me personally but it could be possible. Another here person asking him a question said, Hey, Mark, when does the NDA expire? Asking for 180k friends. Um, we're all ears, Papa. Are you one? Are you on? Sorry. Are you, are you the one causing Papa the, sir, the psoriasis? Okay, cool. Sorry. Jesus Christ. I couldn't read that one. Let's go again. Hey, Mark, when does the NDA expire? Asking for 180 friends. Obviously, the homeless cats. We're all ears, Papa. Are you the one causing Papa with the psoriasis? And he replies, what does NDA mean? New details ahead? Question mark. So clearly he's playing around and loving the attention from the homeless cats. And if it was me and I was advising anybody over there, please don't buy into or bite with this nonsense. This man's a failed actor in the biggest sense of the word. He's been trying to make it in the same industry for ages and ages. And the most attention he's ever got in his entire life, especially when you think of his entertainment career, has been his association with this whole Joe Rogan extended universe type of people and Brendan Shaw and Brian Cannon and stuff. So he basically needs and loves this attention. Even the stuff he does with like Mark, um, sorry, Bradley Martin at Zoo Culture, he does like fitness -y type skits and whatnot. They don't really garner the same reaction or the same outpouring of attention that he gets from the homeless cats and people around that. So I would say don't buy into it. I think he's trying to basically play a game and, you know, it's probably not that serious. Like I said before, I literally think they got fired because Brendan couldn't afford to keep them on. And Brendan always does his thing, this kind of weird passive aggressive thing where he's like, oh, my staff members aren't working enough. They're not doing enough. So I'd imagine BGL being on his phone and basically writing, flipping you know 17 coke filled paragraphs you know getting at people for criticizing brendan probably didn't feel him in any kind of confidence he's probably thinking hey why am i paying you what i'm paying you if you're just going to be writing these snarky replies to people and also there's always a possibility that brendan woke up and thought you know what you're the person that got me into trouble because you know he kind of did give brendan the wrong advice i think he was a handler that brendan didn't need in brendan's time of need bgl was maybe the worst person to have in his corner and you know some of the replies some of the things he said like i still believe i think some of you guys know as well i still believe my theory is that bgl was the one who was responsible for the famous phrase define bullying i honestly do think bgl was the one that gassed brendan up to believe that define bullying would be an amazing uh kickback to say to flipping uh bobby lee and kalila during that whole car crash of a podcast if that's the case he's a terrible handler he gives terrible advice his narrative is all over the place and i wouldn't believe into it or buy into it in the slightest um another person asked him just read some comments here i'm sorry to hear you're gone from tfat k i thought you were better than they gave you credit for does this mean you're not part of the thick boy studio entirely or just tfat k i think this person's kind of sucking him off to get him to answer because to say he was an important part of the show is absolutely hilarious i have another theory 
I think Brian Callan didn't like BGL, and I think Chin didn't like him. There were many occasions when BGL was on the mic trying to be funny and trying to interject, and Chin looked like he was cringing, or he looked like he was rolling his eyes in his head without rolling his eyes in his head because he knew he was on camera, or maybe his glasses are too thick. And I got the feeling that Brian Callan also thought BGL was a bit of a trial because if you think about it, BGL is basically a roided, um, you know, wig wearing Brian Callan with smaller feet or with same size feet. Like BGL is basically Brian Callan, but, you know, a little bit younger in that kind of wanting need to impress and to let, let people like him and trying to chase fame at this old age and not really just waking up and smelling or looking at the tea leaves and realizing it's over and just getting a regular job and living comfortably he's still trying to chase this weird far-flung flipping you know media career as i don't know what he's meant to be again some human lying thing it's really bizarre but i think Brett brian callan saw a lot of himself in bgl and instantly got put off by him like no 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 i'm not a fan of that in the same way that brendan didn't like malik because malik was like a black brendan Shaw right in that his idea of like you know using his athleticism and his looks and all this stuff to kind of propel his comedy career kind of being a bit of a jock in that regard like i i think that's where it comes from so this idea that he was an important part of the show is absolutely crazy mark replied says what do you say he's a reply yeah it's hard for some people to give credit where it's due i'll be doing my own thing from now on <laughs> yeah cool what like handing out flipping steroids to fans when they bump into you in the streets and shit this guy is flipping doing public drug deals and posting shit on social media absolute redact of the highest order again i don't think it's that big of a loss like i said previously i still think they probably got fired because brendan couldn't afford to keep his lease for his flipping lamborghini truck um his ferrari and all these other things whilst playing bgr and other people monies just to sit on flipping instagram and reply snarkily to flipping homeless cats i don't think that's how it works personally another exchange here again to coaching homeless cats with somebody what they say to him they said what they say they said here come on bro it's obvious being friendly and all laughing with them now because you're not on the show hmm seems like you're trying to control my reactions to people commenting on me getting fired in your opinion uh in need to be hostile to everyone commenting in my instagram page even when they shut up bgl fucking wordy cunt for the sake of it innit jesus christ again the other guy replies if someone was my friend and then some guy who cl clearly is part of some cult that hates my friend on reddit is commenting on my post making jokes that i'm part of it i wouldn't reply laughing with them but hey i don't know what happened between you guys maybe you guys weren't even close maybe you were on the ride for money the whole t oh i think he's talking about a fear of one thing right because i think they're saying or the theory out there is that fear of one and brendan fell out because of Theo and BGL's passive aggressive beef. I think Theo said something funny about BGL. What do you call him? A chihuahua or something? I don't know what he called him. Something crazy. Um, something funny, something outlandish. And BGL didn't react too well to it and decided to get on his bully boy thing. Oh, when he saw me in person, he didn't say that. Blah, 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 blah. And um, people hypothesize that maybe BGL having beef openly with flipping Theo Vaughn in the comments probably didn't sit right with Theo it might have led to Theo deciding you know what fuck these fuck the diddler fuck the rapist fuck this guy let me just leave and another comment this guy made again I don't know why these guys do this man you've got money you've got status and you're replying to accounts with no picture in their profile like just you know spam accounts have been set up for the purely the reason of goading you into reaction these guys are horrible at social media um, another one I liked you on the other show on the show by the way just thought you and your brethren were bros but hey maybe you guys weren't or maybe this firing made you not like him anymore for money question mark lol now that's funny okay cool so he didn't say he didn't get paid but maybe he didn't get paid enough and you know there's one thing about these flipping um what you call it when it comes to these flipping la types or these comedian types they never think it's enough right they some of these guys get on these podcast shows they get paid a couple of grand a month to do two hours of work per week and they think it's not enough so you know the not enough scale for these people is very weird compared to re normal people who work a regular nine to five it's very very bizarre very hard to kind of have any sympathy for them when it comes to that sort of stuff so who knows what's the real deal who knows what actually happened and um, regardless of what we know happened some good memes have come out of it big up again the homeless cats are putting this together it's absolutely incredible seeing all the people who got gadooshed in recent months associated with flipping fire and the kid and thick boy you got shrimp over here 
we haven't seen since, have, have, have we, around Brendan and stuff. I think I saw a clip of him at the show once somewhere, hanging out, trying to be part of the flipping vibe. But we haven't seen Shrimp in a while. We've got the first dog that Brendan had. Um, I thought this was maybe a few studios ago, designs ago. This dog, I remember him talking about it. And again, it's another dog that he spoke about and it completely basically never mentioned it again. And if we're honest, also, it's another dog that he was advised not to get because he has kids. But I think the main reason, obviously, I'd imagine his wife not liking dogs, but he keeps getting dogs that are good guard dogs for the home to stop anybody coming in and stealing his dunks or stealing his wife's Birkins. But they're not exactly the best dogs to have if you have small children who are clearly, you know, you know, Brendan Schultz's kids look like the type that, you know, they like to touch and rip stuff off walls and shit. So not the greatest vibe. And then we've got Tank in the background, the recent um, death that happened within the Thick Boy universe, the Kane Corso. Again, I know nothing about dogs, zero. And I just typed it in on YouTube and so many videos came up from dog trainers and whatnot, basically saying that that dog is the number one worst dog to get if you have small children legit it's even bad that kind of dog to get if you live in a neighborhood where there's loads of strangers and shit because it's really territorial and it will attack and rip people's faces off even your own face i saw one video of some guy that was training his dog and he put a hood on and he walked past the gate and he kind of you know same get normal usually dogs if you've got the same gate the same kind of walking style maybe the smell they'll recognize you straight away if you got a hood that king corso was just like barking super loud and being really aggressive because he didn't notice the flipping hat and then it kind of changed course afterwards oh thanks for everything you do my man Big up Tyler Durden, thank you for the ten dollars, my 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 family. Big up, big up, big up, and thank you for you for tuning in. Thank you for you because without you, who would I be? Um, Malik probably. But we continue. So yeah, the King Corso is definitely not a good one. And then of course, recently we got BGL here grimacing. This is probably one of the faces that he pulled when he was at a Tough Mudder, right? This guy went to Tough Mudder, man. BGL, you need to you need to you need to flip in, let your nuts hang. You were in the street. I remember there was a picture of BGL in the streets holding boxes of diet coke pepsi or ever brendan drinks boxes of brendan for him a gro another grown man walking around being another grown man's assistant shameless right he, he like he, he became like a what a 43 year old personal assistant to a failed comedian a failed flipping ufc guy holding boxes of pepsi in public why this guy's got two arms and two legs he can hold them himself and you're there kind of babysitting his flipping pepsis and making sure no one spikes them or something and now he has the gumption to caduce you you should be pissed off man pissed off you he's one true friend he's one actual friend who actually liked him the way he was this is the thing as well bj went out of his way to excuse brendan's behavior he'll be in the comments arguing with people now brendan's actually fine you guys are idiots and he's flipping coke fueled rants writing 79 flipping paragraphs defending him and then look what happened in the end you got good douche go away nod off keep walking look at that Look at that, mate. No loyalty in Hollywood. No loyalty. And here you were flipping berating the homeless cats and making it seem as if we were the problem. When in fact, the whole time, the guy that you were trying to curry up to, the one you were trying to get cozy to, who knows if this led to his divorce? I read somewhere that he got divorced recently. Who knows being out and about with lads and going on tour and not being at home? Who knows if that contributed to the flipping divorce? Maybe it did. Let's believe that narrative. Let's believe the narrative that him being out on the road all the time and touring and going to these far flung places to go and finger bang waitresses at the back of comedy clubs may have potentially led to his divorce or his breakup from whoever he was with prior imagine how much you sacrificed for that guy he sacrificed your entire career reputation in that town you were there before him he was pursuing a hollywood career before brendan was look at look at look at the look at the do your googles of him you'll see this guy skinny you see him with hair with no hair acting in the background standing around looking like a looking like a you know a human mannequin doing everything he can to be you know to make it an industry and it hadn't worked out and then suddenly he stumbles across brendan they share some affinity for weightlifting and whatever it may be and zoo culture and bradley martin and lifting little asian ladies up or above their head and bench pressing them for content right and then look look what he does he dumps you he leaves you by the side of the road come on man horrendous 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 let your nuts hang let your nuts hang sir he just dumped you on the side of the street like you were nothing. Come on, man. Absolutely heinous. Absolutely heinous, man. 
absolutely heinous. Justice for BGL. That's what I say. Justice for flipping BGL. He did not deserve that. <laughs> justice for BGL. I mean, let me restart this chat box. I think it, I think it flipping froze. But justice for BGL. Justice for BGL. He did all that work, all of that flipping, you know, all of that flipping uh, glizzy guzzling, right? Glicking the glizzy off. Remember that? There's that meme going around that guy putting a glizzy on some woman's mouth and like, you know, draining it with flipping mustard and putting it all over her tongue. That's what he was doing. Glizzy guzzling. And in the end, all for what? For nothing. You you still get told to gadoosh. You get gadooshed, actually. You get left on the side of the flipping highway holding those boxes of flipping Diet Coke hoping for somebody to flip in save you there you are part of the entire heaven group again big up the fire and get somebody for this picture there you are on your way on your way to kadoosh heaven mate following an illustrious group of people there on your way to kadoosh heaven look at that kadoosh heaven here we come all of those victims innocent bystanders who are just there trying to help the guy to build his empire and in the end who does he care about himself right himself and his chombies that's it the only people that really get the love that they deserve. <laughs> Look at shrimp. I love the shrimp. A little addition there. Really, really, really small shrimp addition. <laughs> oh, Josh Wolf is there. Big up Josh Wolf. Big up Cat we haven't heard from in a while. Right? Big up Malik. Big up Philippine um, Human Laugh Track there in the background. Right? The Black Labrador. Uh, sorry, the Black Golden Retriever. My bad. Fio obviously there. And of course, we've got BGL doing a damn thing. I think Kat is doing OnlyFans, isn't it, right? She's still doing OnlyFans and lying that she didn't get a flipping BBL. That was hilarious. Kat went away and went, I think one, during one time that she, Kat was around, she was, um, she was sick or something and she took some days off and then she came back to the podcast looking like she had hips and then, you know, didn't want to admit that she got a B BBL. It's like, who cares if you got a BBL? Do your thing in it. Make your money. But she didn't want to admit she got a BBL. But the BBL helped, though. It worked because clearly she's still raking in the, the dollar dollar bills on OnlyFans. So big up her. Um, and the rest of them just moved on and did their thing. But yeah, Josh Wolf was an amazing one as one of the guests. They tried to get on there to be part of it. Um, I forgot that black guy's name. He also moved on. He, If I'm not mistaken, this black guy might have a special or a tour that he's doing. He's doing pretty well, this guy. He really moved on and blossoming. David Lucas is also blossoming. You know, I don't find him funny. He's doing pretty well with Kill Tony. Um, MJ, I'm not really sure what her deal is, to be honest. I'm not sure what MJ's deal is. I've not seen MJ in a while. She's probably doing pretty well, I'd assume, also. Um, Special K went to go, if I'm not mistaken, if I've got my law correct, when Special K left. Is that Special K? Right? That's his K, isn't it? Special K. I think when she left, she went to go work for like a TV company, right? Like Fox or something or Network. I'm pretty sure she went to like an actual network thing. I'm pretty sure that's where she left. And I'm sure Evan the Beard was at Fox. So he just stayed, if I'm not mistaken. When they left Fox, he just stayed. He was like their inbuilt producer who they got affinity with. I think so. Fear Vaughn's obviously flourishing. Oh, we got to talk about that. Fear Vaughn's obviously is flourishing. Oh, the guy with the beard um, is Evan the Beard. He was an old producer when the Final Kid used to be on Fox. When Final Kid was on Fox, Evan the Beard was basically Chin. That was the old school Chin. Um, Fear Vaughn's obviously flourishing, doing well. We're going to speak about that in a minute. Malik is doing his thing. I've seen a video of Malik and Flipping Chappelle doing a skit. I'm not sure if it's new. I feel like it's new. Hopefully, it is new because when Chappelle, you know, good douche Malik and picked him, picked Brendan over him, that really broke my heart. Seeing two black men, you know, squabble over Brendan Shaw when seeing one ditch another for that guy was absolutely hilarious. And then in the end, Chappelle ended up leaving. Uh, he ended up kind of leaving and decided to go and do his own thing because the toxicity levels around Brendan were probably too much, which is absolutely hilarious also. Um, and yeah, and he's, you know, again, probably didn't offer that much. But yeah, BGL's on his way to Gadoosh Heaven. Big up BGL on his way to Gadoosh Heaven. It couldn't have happened to a bigger redact. You deserve it all, mate, for thinking that guy was actually your friend. What naive thinking a old man could be thinking like that how naive an old man could be thinking like that 